number one call for us, and it's 2,000 calls this year already, is for psychiatric or behavioral type calls. Um, we, you know, I've asked uh, our, our paramedics in the streets, and I've, we've been discussing it with the local um, uh, hospitals and treatment centers. Not exactly sure why, but psychiatric and behavioral emergencies are, are definitely the, the leader. And they have been for about three, four years. Um, however, uh, you know, probably the, the, one of the things that we can attribute, or one of our supervisors attributes it to, is maybe the decline in services available to people. Um, but that's just anecdotal. We really don't know. You know. We're always concerned about reimbursement insurance issues, but, but frankly, um, we have a very good support um, of the community. We, we consider ourselves a community ambulance. We try to work with everybody we possibly can. Um, local fire departments, police departments, sheriff's departments, first responders. I mean, we truly are an EMS system. So when we, we start thinking about cost, there's a lot of people that bear the burden of these, um, of the uninsured and of, of, uh, of uh, increased call volumes. Um, you know, so we, you don't have to look too far to, to start, you start thinking about, well, what about people that volunteer out in the county, Cass, Cass County, Castleton Ambulance, for example, that's one we, uh, a, a crew we work with quite a bit. Those, those people are volunteers, so economic impact, boy, it's a domino effect. Think about taking somebody out of their business for a couple hours just to do a volunteer call. I mean, it's, it's there. The, the cost is very real, but it's a needed service. And, um, and we try to do our best to provide that and, and we make sure that we're ready to go when we need to go.